Miami Vice is one of the best and most influential TV shows ever made. Not only that, but it is also one of, if not the most important crime drama ever made in a TV series format. Without Miami Vice, modern TV shows would look, sound and feel completely different. Sounds like an exaggeration, doesn't it? And yet, it's a solid fact. The influence of Miami Vice has been so great that it is today considered amongst the most influential television series ever made, and many aspects of the show have become pop culture icons. Many of its concepts and techniques, such as its heavy integration of contemporary music and its cinematic filming style, have become standard in modern TV shows, while the series' fashion design had a direct influence on the lifestyle choices of the 80s and even the modern 21st century. The music used in the series was initially the result of creative decisions made by the production team, but with the immense popularity of the show and the proven impact of scenes featuring contemporary tracks highlighted by the reception given to the In the Air Tonight scene, the process soon became influenced by record companies eager to have their artists featured on the show. Musicians would clamor to have their songs used in the series, occasionally arranging with the production team to have a new track appear ahead of its commercial release, hoping to increase interest. The situation reached a point where some acts would compose and record tracks especially for use on the show. Often these songs were featured exclusively in the episode in which they were used and on the associated soundtrack albums. Miami Vice had a direct influence on the fashion trends of the 1980s. Crockett and Tops popularized the pastel t-shirt and linen suit look to the point where today it is often considered to epitomize the clothing styles of the entire decade and is still being used by fashion magazines and worn by people to this very day. Later trends established on the show, such as the harsh neon colors of season 3, were also influential, although their popularity has not enjoyed the same lasting fame as the pastel look. According to the Ray-Ban website, wayfarers represent the most recognizable style in the history of sunglasses. This wasn't always the case. There was a time when Wayfarers and the Ray-Ban brand in general were so down, it looked hopeless. With the help of Miami Vice, they rose like a phoenix, thanks to Don Johnson wearing them on and off set. By 1986, Ray-Ban sold 1.5 million pairs of Wayfarers. Don Johnson's designer stubble was copied by men across America, even leading to the marketing of a specialized razor initially called the Miami device before the name was changed for fear of a legal suit. After Six created Miami Vice dinner jackets, Kenneth Cole created Crockett and Top shoes, and Macy's opened a dedicated Miami Vice section for young men. Miami Vice also generated huge interest in other equipment featured on the show. Consumer demand for the Brent 10 pistol Crockett used as a sidearm for the first two seasons became so great that Dorners and Dixon was unable to meet its orders and went bankrupt in 1986. The show had a huge effect on the city of Miami itself. Tourism in the city received a tangible boost as a result of the series' popularity, and the renovation work carried out on dilapidated buildings by the production team as part of filming led to something of a renaissance in the South Beach area. Other buildings and hotels were restored, contributing to the revitalization of the area in the 90s and the influx of celebrities and luxury hotels and clubs in the 2000s. Today, the area is the mecca for the rich and famous. In 1984, before the show had even started, NBC produced a television special designed to preview the network's 84 and 85 fall schedule, and included in that was a skit called Miami Nice, about a group of older women living in Miami. The skit later evolved into the classic series The Golden Girls, which retained its Miami Nice nickname throughout its run of seven seasons. Several commercials have also played on the show's success. 
Ridley Scott directed a 1985 Pepsi commercial featuring Don Johnson as Sonny Crockett alongside Glenn Frey, who appeared on the show as Jimmy Cole in the second season episode Smuggler's Blues. The advertisement also featured Frey's song You Belong to the City, which had originally been written for Miami Vice. In 2010, the Nike shoe company created an advert featuring NBA star LeBron James that parodied a number of pop culture ideas while he tried to determine what he wanted to do with his life. When he suggests going into acting, the Miami Vice logo suddenly appears accompanied by Jan Hammer's Crockett's theme. Although sometimes heavily disputed by the producers, movies such as To Live and Die in LA, Bad Boys and Bad Boys 2 borrowed heavily from the concept of Miami Vice, featuring two undercover cops going to extreme lengths to catch their target. Michael Mann even brought an unsuccessful lawsuit against the producers of To Live and Die in LA, alleging that it plagiarized the television series concept. The Bad Boys movies also highlighted the stylish, glitzy, yet ultimately seedy atmosphere of Miami's underworld that Vice focused on. The technique of removing all background sound from an important scene and replacing them with a music track pioneered in the famous In the Air Tonight sequence from the Vice Pilot episode Brothers Keepers. Probably the greatest homage to Miami Vice are the video games GTA Vice City and GTA Vice City Stories, which Aside from the broad ranging similarities to the show, such as heavy inclusion of 80s music, including new wave, glam metal and synthesizer pop, dealings with organized crime, drug trafficking, stylized cars, prostitution, pastel clothes, etc., include several direct references to the TV show, such as the obvious use of the word vice in their titles. Perhaps the most prominent and direct Hamash occurs when the player achieves a 3 star wanted level or higher, along with traditional police squad cars, the player will find themselves being pursued by an unmarked police issue, a car modeled after the 1986 Ferrari Testarossa, driven by two unnamed, casually dressed undercover cops, one Caucasian and one African American. Another direct link is the whole radio soundtrack of Vice City. About 90% of the songs you hear playing in car radios are either straight from Miami Vice or played during scenes in Miami Vice. During the opening credit sequence, one of the stylized images that appears framing the in-game footage is actually a screenshot from the second season's episode Bought and Paid For, showing a Lamborghini being chased by Crockett's Ferrari Daytona. Two of the in-game street gangs, the Cubans and Haitians, wear the same clothing as two prominent extras from a scene in Brothers Keeper, specifically the scene where Tops first arrives at Miami airport. There are also small green ticky statues hidden around Vice City that can be collected by the player for a monetary reward. These statues are shown to be hollow and packed with cocaine, a reference to the episode Milk Run. The two way City games feature an extensive cast of well-known Hollywood actors voicing their characters. Most notable of these is Lance Vance, one of the primary characters in both games, who is voiced by none other than Philip Michael Thomas, who played Tubbs on Miami Vice. Coincidentally, Vance's goal for much of the first game is to avenge the death of his brother in a drug deal gone wrong, just like Tubbs in the pilot episode of the series. Another noteworthy appearance is by Phil Collins as himself in Vice City Stories, which even includes him performing a live rendition of In the Air Tonight. Vice City Stories additionally features interactions with a corrupt undercover law enforcement officer who dresses in a white suit, loafers and a pastel pink t-shirt, mimicking one of Crockett's famous season 1 and 2 looks. All the things I just mentioned are a very small percentage of the influences of Miami Vice. If I were to actually name every influence and change Miami Vice had on pop culture, then I'd be sitting here till next year. It was one of the biggest TV shows of its time and nothing coming after it managed to catch or recreate its spirit.